Hey everyone, this is Nancy at Zipping and Painting Hamden in Denver. We're located at I-25 in Denver. Oh, I just stuck my elbow in paint. <laughs> We're located at I-25 in Denver and we are a local paint and sip here. We uh, teach about 12 to 14 classes a week under normal circumstances and uh, with those include uh, mostly acrylic, some watercolor, some Bob Ross oil painting classes, and occasionally we paint on something besides, besides canvas like wood. So anyway, we're gonna paint a beautiful painting today. It's called Evening Journey, and it is right here. And if you've ever just been out for a drive and seen either Northern Lights or just a beautiful sunset, uh, I remember one time driving in California, Southern California, uh, going, driving west and just seeing the most amazing sunsets and probably caused by the pollution in LA, but nonetheless, unbelievably gorgeous sunsets. So you could do this in different colors. This particular painting is more like Aurora Borealis. So I'm just using really basic paints here. These are just kind of cheap paints and I'll never get uh, <laughs> sponsored by the expensive paint companies if I say that, but it's okay. I want you to feel comfortable. Whatever you have lying around, use that. So I have yellow, blue, black, red, and white. The three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red, and then black and white, and that's it. And I'm gonna do every painting that way. Uh, I just came up with a new goal today. We'll see how long I keep this, but I'm excited and I think I'm going to. I wanna paint 500 paintings in one year. Uh, so here we go. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to Again, okay. So I have four different brushes. I can show you how to paint with just three of them. All you'll really need are a large, a small, and a medium brush. Super easy. Small. Oops. Large. Medium. This is a fan brush. I wanna show you about fan brushes too. You don't have to have this brush but I'm a big fan of fan brushes. So I'm gonna just show you how to do different things with that too. I also have, uh, so I have my water jar, have my paints, I have some napkins. You always have to have a stack of napkins nearby. Acrylic paints dry in about five to 10 minutes. And so you wanna be sure to keep your brushes in the water at all times uh, when you're not using them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my big brush and I am going to, Hoping you can hear me. Let me check my audio. Yeah, everything's good. Okay, I'm gonna take my big brush. I'm just gonna cover it with a little bit of water. And the reason I do that is I'm in Denver and when it's dry, the paints dry really fast. If you're in a wetter climate like Vancouver or Indonesia or what's wet, Louisiana, then you probably won't need to do this step. But I need to do it because I need to keep the humidity on my canvas so my paints don't try, dry faster than I can blend them, okay? So anytime your paints are drying, just add a, two or three drops of water and stir it in um, and that'll keep them moist. Okay, that's the first thing I did. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up that big brush again and I'm going to put one side of my big brush in the blue paint I'm gonna put the other side of my big brush in the white paint, okay? And when I do that, I'm gonna to start to sketch in some light blue areas on my canvas like that. There's a lot of different ways you can do this painting. You can start with a black canvas and then you can put in the white or you can just put in the color first and then add black on top. So I'm not quite sure what's the best way uh, and it was just kind of random which way I chose. But I'm gonna, actually I'm just gonna swirl in all this color. I'm gonna keep picking up a little more white too. I'm gonna swirl in this color. Leave it streaky, leave it streaky, okay? Because Aurora Borealis is, is messy and streaky. And then we'll bring it all together with the black, framing it. And then also, um, and you could do crisscross if you want. You don't have to just squiggle, scribble. But scribble, crisscross, just leave those streaks. Friends don't let friends over blend, okay? 
And then be sure to paint the sides of your painting and the top as well. And I'm gonna bring this down on the sides. Now notice I haven't even picked up any more paint. I'm gonna make the sides a little darker. I'm gonna make the top a little darker. And I haven't even picked up any more paint. That's just what's left on my brush. And the reason I'm making the tops and the sides and the corners are a little darker is that will create a focal point to my painting if I have those darker. And of course, we're gonna be adding some black in later, so that's fine. All right, nice. Okay, and I'm gonna bring that down oh, somewhere around there. That's where my road starts. Okay, now I used all my paint on my brush. If you still have a lot of paint on your brush, put it in your water, clean it off, and then use your same, dab it with your napkin, and then use the same brush. I'm gonna put white on one side, and I'm gonna put red on the other, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, and I'm going to scribble on, flipping back and forth between the red and the white. And I'm going to get pink. And notice that I'm not using any one particular brush stroke. I'm just scribbling. I'm just scribbling. That's all I'm doing. And I'm going to bring it down in here a little lower. What the heck? Let's, let's bring it pretty low. Okay. And I'm just scribbling. I didn't pick up any more paint. I'm just using the paint that's already on my brush. And where the blue and the pink overlap, just scribble it out. And it, uh, it's going to create this kind of lavendery color, which is nice. But just scribble that out, okay? Just keep scribbling. Just keep scribbling. And as your painting dries and you scrib scribble, it's, it's gonna um, give it a little texture, which is what we want. I'm gonna pick a little bit more white up and I'm put in that pink. I'm gonna make that pink just a bit softer for mine instead of a hard, hard Pepto-Bismol pink, I'm gonna go with a slightly lighter um, cotton candy pink. Okay, now another way you could do it is you could do crisscross strokes, but if you do those, do them light, do them more soft. The softer my touch now, as the painting's starting to dry, the softer my touch, the more ethereal, I think that's the right word, the softer, the more fluffy, lighter, the lighter my technique with my brush, the more soft these colors will look. So at first I just scribbled them on and now I'm just kind of crisscross, but barely touching the canvas, barely touching it, just as soft as I can. It's like you're tickling the canvas and that's just making it a little softer. And my paint is starting to dry. And by doing this while my paint is drying, it's almost like a dry brush technique. It's just smoothing out whatever is there without really taking out the, the nice, what am I trying to say? It's not enough pressure to really blend it. I don't want to blend it all away so it's just one lavender color. I'm touching it so lightly. I'm just taking off the coarsest brush strokes and just softening them a tad. There's no pressure. I'm barely holding on to this brush. It's not a depth grip. Super, super soft. Super, super light. When you touch your canvas softly with your brush, you get softer strokes. And notice I still have white blobs and streaks in there, and I still have areas that are decidedly pink, but it's not blended all into one color. If I were to press harder, I'd blend it all into one color, and that's not what I want. I just want it to be soft and pretty. I want it to look like a sky should. Nice, do you see it's coming along, it's coming along. And again, I'm barely touching that canvas. And right now I'm just kind of going over those areas where the pink and the purple, I'm doing a little figure eight motions, a little uh, barely touching it where the pink and the purple overlap. And just, just making it so I can't really tell where this 
pink starts and where the purple ends and the blue starts. It's all just soft and floating in and out. It's almost cloud-like. And I can get that effect by just barely touching the canvas while it's still moist. Barely, barely touching it. If I were to put an angel in here, that would be pretty. Real soft, real soft. Everything's real soft. Okay, nice. Now, if this one has a little more intensity of color in here. If you want a little bit more red, repeat your steps. If you want, if you want, you can put a little more red in if you like that. And then I had white on one side, I had pink on the other, and I'm just intensifying the color a little bit, just a little bit. But again, if you do that, you're gonna have to brush it out as it dries real soft, real soft, real soft. Now at any time you want, you can stop this uh, video and you can just rewind it. I guess we don't wind, I'm old. We used to have tapes and we used to rewind them, but you can just stop it and go backward and see that part again. That's the beauty of having a Zoom class or a YouTube class is you can just stop and start, stop and start. Go back and catch up. If you need to let out the dog or go get a cup of coffee or use the restroom, nice. You can't really do that too much with an in-person class because you might miss something. But when it's at home like this, you can do it on your time. You can watch 10 minutes of it today and watch 20 minutes of it tomorrow. And it's all on you. I kind of think, I, I teach the Bob Ross classes here at Sipping and Painting Hand, and those are oil painting classes. And I, I wonder sometimes, what would Bob Ross say about all this painting and sipping um, these paint and sip studios. I wonder if he'd like them. I think he would. I think he'd really like it. I think he'd say, you know, whatever gets people to relax and try, try something new, I think that's a good thing. I think he'd really like it. All right, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. My brush was so dry that I didn't even clean it, but you can clean it. If you, if you want to add a little bit of white, in some of these areas that are a little brighter, you can do that. And I'm just putting on a little bit of white, I'm looking to see where it might be a little brighter in the other painting. Just putting in a little bit of white, and then I'm gonna blend that in, just like I did before. It's just adding a little bit of brightness in the same kind of spots. Now remember, your painting's not gonna look like mine. My painting's not gonna look like, um, the original, uh, because every time we paint, something looks different. So it, the paintings look different. Um, as I said, I was a, I'm a certified Bob Ross teacher here in Denver, and when I went down to Florida for my training, we had a, you know, a, a room similar to my studio here. It was a, in a strip mall. It's the Bob Ross studio down there. The only difference is instead of having our paintings on the wall, these acrylic paintings, they're real Bob Ross paintings down there. Uh, it's very cool to see. Um, but anyway, everyone in the room, in the classes, when I was doing my training, everyone else was doing the training, everyone's paintings look different. And sometimes I'd get real self-conscious and think, oh, I can't paint as well as that person. And then by the end of the day, I was pretty happy with what I painted. But what I learned was that there are no two painters the same. Even when I could see the same composition that Bob did, he would take the same composition. He would, this is interesting, a little trivia for you. I'm gonna let that dry a second and I'll tell you some trivia. Um, so I heard from some of the people that knew Bob down there and they said that before his shows, he would take one, take a photo or an inspiration to his producer and he'd say, this is what I'm gonna paint and he would paint it. And the producer would say, great, that's great. And then uh, the, they'd schedule the show and a half hour before the show, he would paint it again and he would practice by painting that one, one more time. And then on the show, he would paint it. Now, of course he'd pretend like he was making it up off the top of his head. But he had a sample, and sometimes he'd change it, but pretty much he had a sample, and, and, and that's what he was painting. So then he would leave these paintings to the PBS stations um, where he, you know, where he would travel around and they, they would sell their paintings um, for PBS. And so he would leave them as gifts. And 
Uh, so he would have three copies of the same composition. And since then, some of those copies have gotten back together or you can find them together on the internet and none of them look the same. It's the same inspiration, it's the same composition, but they don't look the same. Moral of the story is when you paint, even if you paint the same composition two days in a row, it won't look the same because it depends on how much you sleep and how much you slept and what you ate and uh, a host of other, other reasons, all kinds of reasons. Um, you know, how you're feeling that day, what you're thinking about. And so your painting is going to look different. And yours and mine are always going to look different. And that's beautiful. Don't, don't ever try to make yours look like mine uh, because I'm trying to make it look like someone else's. We're always hard on ourselves. But just remember, yours is you. It's your expression. It's your personality coming out in the canvas. Embrace that. Love it. And go with it and see where it takes you. Okay. So... Awesome, we're doing fantastic. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my big brush. I'm looking at how to do this. What, let's, let's do this, I'm gonna show you a couple different techniques. I'm gonna take my napkin. You can take a piece of paper or a piece of aluminum foil or wax paper. Those are probably better. But all I have laying around is a piece of paper. I'm gonna hold it super light because I don't wanna crush it. I don't want it to be a ball. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip this right this is crazy. I'm gonna dip this right in my black paint. You can also take a sponge, that works too. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I just want these different shapes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in on these corners and I'm going to just poke around a bit because I don't want this to be too dark and I don't want it to be too uniform. And I don't want it to cover everything. So it's just soft touch, soft touch, soft touch. I'm gonna come down the sides. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna really emphasize those corners and the top and the side, like it's a frame. And then I'm going to show you the difference between the fan brush brushing this out a little bit. Make sure you're the top is, is good too, right up there on the top. And right up there on the sides as well. And a large brush. There are lots of different ways you could do this. But I'm going to show you with a couple of brushes. All right. Now I'm going to take my big brush out of my water, make sure you always clean in between. I'm gonna dab it on my napkin so I don't get any drips. And then, that's still not, that was a little wet. So this is a, this is too wet, sorry. Let me uh, get a drier brush, hold on. One second, I'm just rubbing the paint off my brush so my brush is drier. I want a drier brush, okay. I, this is called a dry brush technique, but it requires a dry brush. One second. All right. So then if your brush is dry, you just scritch scratch it really fast. Just scritch scratch it. Uh, X strokes. And super fast, super fast, super fast. Because you have to do it while it's drying. Okay. And I'm scribbling and I'm not trying to cut, do perfect coverage. I'm not even trying to do that. Oh my, this is a mess. Hopefully I can save this one, huh? All right, hopefully, we're gonna try. All right, and you have to do that with a dry brush as it's drying and do it a lot, okay? And your arm might get a little tired, that's okay. I'm barely touching the canvas because I don't want the paint to be thick. I just want this effect of some of this being covered, okay? Just some of it being covered. All right. And then make sure any place it's dark, you steal some of that shiny paint. You'll know if it's wet, if it's shiny, and just steal it and put some extra on the sides. Okay.
or somewhat. All right. Now I'm also going to, well, you, you can keep doing that with your large brush over and over and over. And as it dries, press harder, but don't pick up more paint. Here's my fan brush. It does the same thing, the same thing. It does the exact same thing. Now fan brushes can be used for all kinds of stuff, but it does make wispy movements if you're just trying to make some wispiness. Okay, that's what I'm using it for today. Fan brushes, it's good to have a fan brush in your paint box. Um, fan brushes can also be used to paint hair and fur and grass and beautiful foliage. It makes beautiful foliage on trees. Beautiful. All right. And so I'm just kind of going around where I want this to be dark. Er. Okay. Make sure you always get those sides on the top and the bottom too. Don't just get the front of the canvas. When you get the sides and the top and the bottom of it, that creates a gallery wrap. And then you can hang it in your house, which is nice. Now my brush is really dry and my paints are really dry now. Because like I said, it's Denver, things are dry here. So I'm going round and round. Now, if you're in a place that's wet, then you won't be able to do this yet. So you have to wait till it's some more dry. But I am scratch scratching and okay. Now, what I can do now is I can clean off that brush that I used. Clean it really good. Since you had black paint, make sure you clean it really good because that black paint's powerful. I'm going to dab it off. And now I'm going to just add a little more blue. Blue on one side of my brush, white on the other, but just a lot less paint. Very, very little paint. Very little paint. And you don't want your brush to be wet. You want it to be mostly dry. Blue on one side, white on the other. But I didn't scoop it. There's no clumps here. This is just a tiny bit of paint. Just a tiny bit. And then I can come over. Oops, a little more white. And I can come over, hold on. I'm tapping off any excess onto my paper plate, which I'm using as my palette. And I can come back in light as a feather, just kind of go back and forth like we did in the first step and just soften, soften a little bit, okay? Just soften, it puts a little bit of that softness back. And now it's gonna pick up some of that black and that's okay, cause it's gonna, I'm putting it in the areas where it overlaps with what we did before. And I'm just going back and forth, soft, 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 soft. This whole painting, it's, it requires a soft touch. It really does, it really does. And I'm just very softly going over those areas where the two overlap. I'm gonna pick up a little more blue because I want more blue off to the side. And again, I'm gonna just keep working this until it's a, my brush is dry and the paint is dry and then I can really put more pressure on. But right now I'm barely touching the canvas. Bob Ross used to say when he painted, and again, he painted with oil, it's not acrylic, but he used to say two hairs in some air. It's hard to blend with acrylic paint, it's tough. But if you're patient enough and you keep putting on layer over layer and you let your brush get dry in between and then scritch scratch it, you can layer, um, you can blend with acrylic. Now people who paint in oils, they'll tell you, oh, I love oils because you can blend in oils and you can't in acrylic. Well, that's not true. You just have to work it in acrylic, okay? It's not that you can't, you just have to work it. Yeah, that's it. All right, so and I'm working it. All right, so I'm going back and forth, barely touching the canvas, barely touching it. Now this blue that I'm using may not be the exact same blue in the other color, the other painting. We really wanna teach you in just the basic colors so you can learn how to mix. So for example, when we paint paintings that have um, you know, green, we wanna use yellow and blue and teach you how to mix those. And at our studio, we have about, oh, about 50 different colors of paint, so you could just, pull one out that's exactly what you want. But we don't want to teach you that. We want to teach you how to do it with your basic supplies so that 
you, you never are without your scales or your paint. If you just have those five colors, you can, you can learn how to mix them and create anything you want. Okay, so this is where it's gonna to start to be a little more pressure because my canvas is dry. And that's, that's what I want. So I'm gonna use more pressure now, more pressure, more pressure. More pressure, more pressure, and I'm working fast. Now, this takes a while. This is not a fast, fast and easy process. If you want it fast and easy, there are other ways, but I'm not teaching you fast and easy. I'm teaching you something that you're gonna find useful when you paint. Okay. <laughs> if you had spray paint, you probably do this a lot easier and a lot quicker. That's all right, I don't wanna do spray paint. I wanna, I wanna blend acrylics. Everyone says you can't blend acrylics. Well, we are. Okay. It's fast. It's fast. Now, another thing you can do is you can add water to your um, uh, to your brush. I can clean it, dab off the big drips, and then if my brush is moist, it's going to be more effective in moving this paint, dry paint around and just blending it, softening, softening it. So you can see this is really dry here, really dry. So in order to do anything, I gotta really use a lot of pressure down there. All right, so now I've got this wispy, soft sky. Doesn't look exactly like the other one, but you know what, that's pretty close enough. If I wanted to put a little more red down there, pink on one side, red on the other, and then I can, I wanna put a little more color. I can see it better on the camera actually than I can in person. Uh, you can't really see what you're painting in person. I don't know if you've ever noticed that if, you're, if you've painted before. You can't see something right up front. You just can't. And that's why we're so hard on ourselves because we can't see it. But then if you step 10 to 15 feet away, you can see it and you'll be able to see what others will see. And you usually like it a whole lot more when you step away. It's kind of like raising teenagers, that's my philosophy. You'll love them, but when you're around them too much, they drive you crazy and you are very critical. But then when you step away and you see them the way others do, and you're, you start to appreciate their beauty from a distance. So uh, that's, that's uh, that's my philosophy. Having raised three teenagers, sometimes you need a little break. And they need a little break. They need a little break. They need a break from mom and dad. All right, so again, soft, 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 blend, blend, blend. X strokes as it dries. Just keep fluffing, just keep fluffing, just keep fluffing. I think I call this fluffing. I don't know what it is, what it's if there's a technical word for it, but it's just blending back and forth, back and forth. And my little, little wrist or arms getting a little bit of a workout and that's okay, that's good. All right, and this is how you blend acrylic paint. You, it's just some work, it's a little effort, no big deal. Oils would be a lot easier, they'd be sliding all over the place, but then you have to be careful with oils because they slide so easily, they sometimes slide right off your canvas and onto the floor. So, I, I prefer acrylics, although I have to tell you, we've made some beautiful Bob Ross paintings in our Bob Ross classes. Oil paintings are a lot mess, painting in oil is a lot messier and it takes a lot of cleanup. So it's kind of lazy in comparison. All right, I'm pretty happy with my background. I'm pretty happy and I hope you are too. Now, if you need a little bit more time, you can stop the video. I just noticed this area in here got dull again. I'm just gonna brighten it up a little more black. Sorry, a little more white, just a little bit. And I'm gonna fluff that out. Ooh, fluff, 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 fluff. It helps if you sing or be silly and move around. Oh, here's some, here's some tips that you're gonna wanna know. There was some research done, some psychological research, and it showed that if you wanna open up your creative mind, there are specific things you can do to open up and let those creative mind synapses connect in new experiences. In other words, every time you paint or you create, that you do these things to help 
get the creative juices flowing because there really are creative juices in your brain. Uh, they're your synapses, your creative synapses. Uh, they're not really juice, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so a uh, few things that you can do to get those going. One is to move around while you're painting. So stand up, move around, walk around, come back. Another one is alcohol. Now, if you don't drink alcohol, more power to you. Um, but that is one way is to have a drink. Now, if you, my philosophy here at the studio is if you have one drink, you're going to feel relaxed. If you have two drinks, you're not going to be your best judge of what's good and what's bad, but you're going to think you're Michelangelo. And nothing wrong with that. If you have three drinks, you're going to need to solicit the teacher to finish your painting, probably. So we like to encourage uh, responsible drinking, of course, um, at our studio. So we like to recommend, you know, have a couple of drinks and then, and then focus on your painting. <laughs> Some people come in and drink coffee too. I don't know how they do that and still feel creative, but hey, whatever works. I'm a coffee drinker, but coffee makes me a little, a little nervous. All right, so we've got this wispy, wispy, pretty sky. And it's just fast. I like it. I like it. And you can do some brush strokes coming out of it, like, like those white ones are just coming out of the heavens. You see those? It has to be very dry to be able to do that. Very dry. Very dry. It's a dry brush technique. It means what dry brush technique means is your paint's about 90% dry and your brush is about 90% dry, but still there's just this tiny amount that it's not and that allows you to, to do that. All right, now here's the thing. Now we're gonna make stars. See the bottom of my brush? I'm gonna wash my brush first. See the bottom of my brush? I'm gonna take the bottom, not the brush part, I'm gonna dip it in white. And now I'm gonna put on a gazillion, that's a technical word. I'm gonna keep popping in my white paint. I'm gonna put in a gazillion stars especially in the darker areas. Okay, this is gonna take a while, but it's very relaxing if you just enjoy it. Very zen-like, just soft little. Now, if you really want perfect circles, you can touch it and twist it, touch it and twist it, touch it and twist it. I don't really care. I don't really care, so I'm just gonna tap. I'll reload. If I get lines, I'll reload. And I don't care if they're perfect. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Now, every time I reload, the paint is thicker and I get bigger dots. And then as I keep going, the paint starts to be left on the canvas and not on the brush. And then I get smaller dots. So now this cloud seems to be going in that direction. So I'm kind of doing some at an angle. What you don't want is you don't want them equidistant. There's a science word for you, an engineering word or math word. What you want is that they're random. Don't, don't put them like checker, like uh, dominoes. Don't make them perfect. In fact, you want some that have a cluster, like a family. Okay? That's more realistic. Little clusters. Some clusters, some loners. Just like people in the world. Some, some live in a house with other people and some are alone and all of it's good, okay? All right, and I'm just gonna keep putting on my dots. And I'm gonna do a lot of these. This is a lot of dots. It's a lot of dots. Dark areas, light areas, you decide. Just make sure that you have clusters and it's not like the game dots that you played when you were little. You don't want them perfectly square and symmetric. Don't do a grid. Don't do a grid. You just want them to look random and maybe there's some little constellations. That's where the clusters come in. And we're gonna do this for a long time. We're gonna put a lot of dots. And the reason is, is because this is how we create our aurora borealis look 
Now there are some artists who will show you an easier way to do dots. This doesn't seem to work for me well very often. It might take practice and I haven't practiced it a lot. So I don't mind the Zen like pop, pop, pops. But here's another way if you want. And you can try it and see. I'm gonna use a fan, is a brush. You can use any brush. Okay, and so you dip it in water, make sure it's moist, and then you put it in your paint, and then you pull back. And it's supposed to, that never works for me. Oh, there it goes. It's supposed to deposit some dots on the painting. <laughs> Sometimes I pull forward and I put dots on my face. So I don't really like that idea. I use a corner of my fan brush because it's got paint on it if I want to, but um, you know, I think I'm gonna go back to just using the end of my other brush. I like that better. You do you. If that works for you, do it. I don't really like that way. Okay, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna put on more dots, more dots. Most of this painting is the background. So if you're tired, you're like, oh, that background was tough. And these dots, oh my gosh, so many dots. That's okay. The background's the hardest part of the painting. It's gonna be a lot easier when we get to the other parts, trust me. Trust me. But it's really the background of the painting that's beautiful. Nobody wants to see just a road. That's not why they're here. I don't wanna just see a road. They wanna see this beautiful sky that's all wispy and I think the word's ethereal. I'll have to look that up. But this beautiful cosmic aurora borealis, northern lights, galaxy, call it what you will. But this is what they're here for, are these lights. Since northern lights tend to go on these angles up, these diagonals, I can twist my brush and just tap it like a drum leaving lots of angles in that metal there. You can put on a song with lots of percussion and just tap it out if you want. All right, do I have enough dots? This one has quite a bit, so let's keep going. Now this might be a good time for you to step back and look at yours from a distance, okay? But you decide that, that's your call. I'm gonna put a few more in my red here because that's really where the focal point is. It's this general area. So I'm gonna put a little more of the dots in there. But you put them wherever you want because you know what, it doesn't really matter. It's all gonna be great, okay? Down here, it doesn't matter. We're gonna cover that up with road anyway. All right, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, this is the easy part. If you wanna stop, take a break, you can, but I'm gonna keep going. And now I'm gonna paint the road, and then I'm gonna paint these trees around the road, okay? So. Let me show you a close up of the road so you can really see it. Okay, it is the shape of a shark's fin. You see that? And it's about an inch from this side of the canvas and an inch and a half from this side of the canvas where, where we're gonna put our dots. And then this is about, um, about a slightly open hands width high, okay? where my pinky is. That's where we're gonna put our dots. So I'm gonna take a black dot and I'm gonna put it one right about here. That's for the top of my road. Maybe a little over here, actually. Ignore that first one. We're gonna go with that one, all right? We're gonna go with that one. It's slightly off center, 
It's not exactly in the center, it's slightly off center. All right, and then the next dot we're gonna put down here. And then another one down here. All right, now I'm gonna take my baby brush, I'm gonna put it in my black paint. Now, if your black paint's getting thin, thick, add a few drops of water, because you want it to be like, like ink more than Hershey syrup. And then I'm going to take my black, my on the brush and I'm going to go from this this dot to that one I'm going to curve it ready curve curve okay nice nice make sure that's nice and pointy up there and now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side but I'm going to curve in instead of out curve in instead of out So this is a curve in, this one's a curve out. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my black paint, I'm gonna mix a little bit of it with a little white. So here's my white. I'm going to take a little bit of this black and I'm gonna put it on the side of the white and mix it in because what I want is a charcoal gray. I don't want black, I want charcoal gray. And you could do it over the blue. If you have a little, you know, blob of light blue from before, you could put it right over that. That's fine. All right. And then I can just fill it in. If you, I'm, I like to, when I have an outline, I like to take my medium brush and go next to the outline with a small brush so I'm not going outside the lines. Believe me, I go outside the lines in my life all the time. But in a painting, if you're painting a road, you want to stay inside. It's rare in a landscape, you wanna stay inside the lines and look at things, you know, in that controlled way. But when you're painting a road, you really need to. So I, I took that small brush and I did it on the inside. Now, just for speed, if you want, you can take that, your uh, medium brush and put it in that gray. And then you could fill it in. You could fill it in with your medium. The reason I did my small first is just I don't want to mess up those sides and I, the small brush gives me a little more control. And that's a good thing when you're painting a road. All right, and you can, I need to make some more gray paint, but you can fill that in with your medium brush. It makes a little more paint. And then I'm going to fill it in. Notice how I'm picking up my canvas moving around. You can do that. It doesn't have to stay flat on your table or, you know, stationary in your easel. You can pick it up and move it around. You know, lean it on some books, you know. Just, just be careful that you don't get paint on everything, but handle it. Handle it. Pick it up. Get it from different angles. Sometimes I paint upside down because then it's easier to, to get it at an object in my painting. Just fill it in, smooth it out a bit. Now, if it's not perfectly smooth, great. That's even better. You know why? Because roads aren't perfectly straight. And then be sure you get the bottom too. Because remember, we're hanging this on the wall and we're using this technique called gallery wrap where you, oh, I just go, went in the red, silly me. But uh, we're doing the gallery wrap technique. And so you want it to have paint all the way around, like the can, like the painting has just been wrapped around the frame. And that way you can hang it on the wall and save money. You don't need to frame it. All right, so we've got our pretty sky, we've got our road. Nice, good job folks. All right, I'm gonna put my, this is a good time to take a break, but I'm gonna keep going. And then you can stop your film, your video, and then take a break if you want. But I'm gonna keep going. I'm going to take my, uh, gray that I just made and I'm going to add a little um, white to it. I want a slightly lighter shade of gray now and I'll tell you why. So just add a little white to what you're already working with 
Anytime I want to sharpen a little brush, if I don't have a tiny, tiny brush and I need to be exact, I just take that paint and I chisel it back and forth like, by pulling and twisting on the side of my plate. Pulling and twisting, and that chisels that brush a little bit. Drag it down, pull it and twist it. Gives me slightly sharper point if I need one. And then let's see if this is slightly lighter. I just need this outline to be a little bit lighter. And the reason I'm doing that is, you know on the side of a road, there's the gravel and it's a little lighter than, than the road. It's usually made of sand or pea gravel or whatever. Um, and it's just a little lighter on the side. So I'm putting that in. It's just outlining it with my small brush and a slightly lighter shade of gray. Does it have to be perfect? Heck no, even on the roads when you're driving, it's not perfect. Because that's where the asphalt kind of goes off into the dirt or the sand. You can really hardly even see that. It's not that important anyway, so don't worry about it. All right. If you made it kind of thick like I did, you can go back in with your darker paint and you can, you know, pull it back a little with some darker paint wherever you made it too thick. If your brush, my, my small brush is not very fine and I could use a more detailed brush, but I'm gonna use what people tend to have in their homes. And they don't tend to have, you know, amazing artist brushes. They tend to have whatever junk they had laying around their house. And that's what I'm using, just showing you how to use different techniques. So you don't have to have the per most perfect of everything. Because goodness, I sure don't. I just paint with whatever I have laying around, like I said, with that, that paper towel we used. All right, nice. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. Yay! And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make trees, okay? Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna take my big brush. Here's the next step, folks. Again, this would be a time to get up, um, you know, pause the video if you want, get up, get a beverage, go to the bathroom, whatever, just stop it. But I'm gonna keep going, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna fill in some areas. I have a lot of blue paint left and not quite as much black. So I'm gonna use my blue, why not? What the heck, right? And I'm just gonna fill in. All this is gonna be covered with trees anyway. So it doesn't matter if you use blue or black, it's just a background to the trees we're gonna cover it with. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that blue because I have some left over. Now I'm using my big brush, but I'm gonna probably come in with my baby brush and fill in the area next to the road so I don't make too big of a mess. But this is just called blocking. I'm just blocking in some color where I need some color, some, something darker. And so just gonna fill this in. Again, if you have more black than blue, use your, you know, use your black, but we're gonna use quite a bit of black still with our trees. So don't use all your black. That's why I'm using the blue. I have a lot of blue left over. And as long as I have blue left over, I'm just gonna use it. All I need is a dark color in here. It doesn't matter what the color is because I'm gonna be covering it with trees anyway. And the trees are black and they're gonna cover all this up. But I just need something to hide that pink and that white. Yep, if I just hide the pink and white, that's really all I care about at this point, okay? All right, good. Make sure you get the sides and the top and the bottom as well, always. Always get the top and the bottom as well. All right, very good. I'm gonna wipe off my brush, put it in the water. I'm gonna let that dry a minute. Now it looks like my road is probably dry enough in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix a little white and my little, little yellow with my baby brush. You should always clean your brushes. I'm gonna add a little white to my yellow and that's so that the yellow shows up better. White is a thick pigmented paint and yellow is more translucent. So if you add a little white to your yellow, it shows up better. Same thing with red for some reason. But if you do too much, then you get a paler color. But just enough that it's a little, um, just a little more opaque, which means 
thicker. Like you can't see through it as much. All right, so now I'm gonna, I have that paint, my yellow paint, it's pretty thick now. I'm gonna chisel my brush because I don't want any clumps. I'm spinning it between my fingers as I pull it back, back and forth on the page, on the plate rather, uh, and that kind of sharpens it. That's what I want, and I don't want any clumps in it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be careful, okay? So notice when I'm careful, this is what I do when I'm careful. I put my pinky out and I touch, it has to be dry so you don't pick up your paint, but I'm touching on the canvas with my pinky, make sure it's dry first, and then I'll pull back with my brush, but I want to steady my hand. So I, I'm touching that point in the middle and I'm going to pull back and I'm going to try to follow that curve from the top somewhat. There you go, there's my road line. Now, is it perfect? No. Do I care? No. The line should probably be a little thicker at the bottom, so I can come up and then let it lift off. All right, there's my road line. Now, if, if you're a picky person and you have time, and you want to make that thinner, you know, you could always do that by using a little bit of your black paint and just outlining that line. Like I said, my brushes are not that exacting. I'm using kind of some standard edition brushes. If, if I were a decorator, they'd be builder grade. Student quality, so they're not real precise. I don't care, who cares, do you care? No, I just want you to learn how to paint. So. If you want to make that line perfect, go for it. I'm not going to waste my time because I'm going to paint 500 paintings this year and I'm not going to obsess too much about any of them. Actually, um, I want to do it as kind of a spiritual practice and I don't mean, I'm not going to get all religious on you, but it's soothing, it's calming, it's good for your soul. And that's why I want to paint a lot this year because the world has been crazy and I want to I want to respond to it with peace and create something beautiful. Um, you know, I'll change the things I can change, right? And have influence in positive ways in my community. But when it comes right down to it, there's something, things I can't control. And so by painting, I can bring peace to myself. And when I have peace for myself, I'll be more level-headed when I deal with others. All right, so we've got a road. We've got some land, it's blue, which is a little weird, but that's okay. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to do pine trees, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you two ways to do pine trees. One is with a small brush. This is how to do a pine tree with a small brush, and then I'm gonna show you with a fan brush. So regardless of what kind of brush you have, whether you have small or fan, you'll still be able to do it. So here we go. Again, I put black paint on my brush, I'm pulling back and forth, twisting it in my hands to chisel. Okay, now let's do, I'm going to do a medium-sized tree right over here. Okay, I'm going to start over here and I'm going to tap. I'm not coming down with my trunk by stroking it down like that. And the reason is I don't want a straight line. Nothing in nature is straight. I want it to be a little crooked and bumpy. Now I'm gonna use that finger thing again, so make sure your finger's clean. Tap my bottom finger. I'm gonna drop below the top because the top is the point of the pine tree. And with my baby brush, I'm gonna alternate sides and I'm going to tap on branches coming out from the trunk and angling slightly down. Coming out from the trunk, angling slightly down. Now, I want to remember that pine trees have a uh, triangular shape. They're wider at the base than they are at the top. So I want the top to be really pointy and the branches to be really tiny up there. Those are the babies. These bigger branches, those are the ones that have been there a while. And I'm gonna fill in around the trunk a little bit as I go so it doesn't look like a ladder just back and forth on either side of the trunk a bit. Just tap, tap, tap. 
and that makes it not look too ladder-like. Remember, every branch should be slightly different in size, length rather. They're coming out from the trunk, but you can have some farther apart than others and some shorter than others. Make sure you don't just draw lines like that, it'll look silly. You have to tap it, you just have to tap it. There's no way around it because tap gives you that texture. And don't make it a perfect triangle coming out. Don't make every branch exactly measured, just mostly longer at the bottom, mostly, okay? Mostly, mostly longer at the bottom. You can see how I'm gonna fill in with a lot of the black. So I didn't really worry about that blue being back there. Could have been blue, could have been green, didn't really matter, okay. So there's one pine tree, okay? That's a medium-sized one. I'm going to have a taller one on this side. Let me show you one more time. I'm going to tap it on with my tall brush, with my small brush. It'd be easier and faster to stroke it on with a line, but it won't look right. The trunk, if you ever see a pine tree, they're bumpy. They have scales and they're not straight. So you don't want yours to be smooth and straight. It won't look like a pine tree. Okay, I'm only doing half of a pine tree over here. And I'm just going back and forth and tapping. Now, if I were to draw a line and went back and forth, I'd have a zigzag and it would look silly. But I'm tapping, 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 tapping these lines, tapping, tapping. And then I'm gonna show you how to do some with fan brushes. Fan brushes are a lot easier in, to me for a pine tree. My staff here at Sipping and Painting Hamden, they really like to do it with a smaller or medium brush. I'm not quite sure why but I really like the fan, it's faster. But I'll show you this, I'm showing you this way, and then I'll show you that way too. Now down here where it's dark, oh, here's another thing, let me tell you. When people are painting pine trees, it's one of my pet peeves, I guess, people will put a little trunk down there, like a Christmas tree. That looks fake, okay? And what I mean by that is when a pine tree is growing, the branches start, just as little seedlings. And they, then they continue to grow out as the tree is growing up. So the ones that have been there longer, they're a little wider, right? But no, tr no pine tree I've ever seen grows with a bottom foot with no branches. What that is, is that in city parks and in Christmas tree farms and um, on your lawn, you remove the bottom branches to get your lawn more under there. So if this is out in the woods, if you're in a forest, you are not going to see that. You're just not. It's not going to have that foot of just trunk at the base because no one came around and trimmed that tree. So have those branches come out all the way down to the ground and that'll look more natural. If you're, if you're going for natural, don't leave a Christmas tree base on your tree on your pine tree. All right, I'm gonna just do one more on this technique and then I'm gonna switch over to the fan. I'll show you how you do it with the fan. Very similar, but it's so much faster and easier, I think. All right. And then what you can do down here is you can just scribble, just scribble that blue away. Just scribble, because it's all supposed to be black. There's not supposed to be any light coming there. This is all just dark. And if you have, if you have uh, little pops of blue or white, just leave them, it's okay. No problem, no problem. And if your tree sticks over the road a little bit, you can go back and you can just fix it by mixing a little more white. Or you can just leave it. A little more gray. Or just leave it, it's your choice. I don't, it doesn't matter, it's your world, you do you, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna show you the pantry way. Okay, here's my fan brush. A bit cleaner. Here's my fan brush. Fan brush looks like a rake. Okay, and I'm going to tap it. Oh, hold on. So I'm in the way. I'm going to tap it in my black paint, and I'm going to pull back. Now this paint's I have a lot of paint that's thick, so I'm going to chisel it on the side like that, on the side of my plate. All right, here's fan fan tree. Let's do one over here. I'm gonna start with 
The same technique. It's a tap. It's not a drag. Don't drag it. Please don't drag it. Okay. And then I'm going to drop down about a half an inch from the top. And then I'm going to tap back and forth just like I did before. But when I start, when I start at the tip, look at the, look at how I'm holding my brush. Do you see that? It's almost perpendicular to the canvas. No, it's almost parallel to the canvas. And as I go down, my brush is going to rotate because then I use more of this fan. But at the tip, I only want to use the corner because I want to get those baby branches. But notice how my brush is rotating forward. You see that? See how it's rotating forward when I paint? It's rotating forward. And I'm going to pull that all the way down and make sure I get the sides too. Make sure you get the sides over there. And the bottoms, of course. All right. Oops. Okay. A little damage on my canvas. Just covering it up. Okay. So I stopped the bottom branch in the other road because I don't want them to hang over the road because this one didn't. Um, but normally they'd be hanging over the road. All right. So notice I have a tall tree on this side. I have a tall tree on that side. Any idea why? It's because it frames in the painting. It, it brings your eye down to where you want it in this pretty area. Again, so I popped on a trunk and now I'm going to use the corner of my brush to get those baby branches and on top a little bit longer. And as I go down and I zigzag, I'm not stroking it, zigzag, I'm not, that would look silly. I'm tapping it, pouncing it like Tigger. The wonderful thing about Tigger, that Tigger's are wonderful things. Their tops are made out of bottoms. Tops are made of, no, the top, <laughs> their tops are made of the rubber. Their bottoms are made of the springs. There you go. Anyway, you're gonna pounce it down, pounce it. It's like if you've ever repelled, anyone who's ever repelled, it's the same, same thing. Um, yeah, I, I repelled in my early 20s. Haven't been fit enough to do that since then, but it was fun, it was really fun. All right, now I'm gonna do another one. Make sure you leave some spaces in between your branches. You don't want a black brick wall. So if the ones you've done so far are too close together, spread it out on your next ones, okay? There you go, see that? See that? And you can tap in these blue areas because it really, it doesn't matter too much, it's just blue, okay? You can fill that in a bit, all right. Looking good, looking good. And I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna put smaller and smaller ones in. It's gonna get harder with a lot of paint, so I gotta be careful not to use too much paint. I'm gonna use a little bit too much, okay. Now they're gonna get shorter. As I go down, they're gonna get shorter because they're farther away. And I have to be careful and not use too much paint. And also, not use too much brush. All right. They're gonna keep getting shorter because, why? Because they're farther away. Tap, 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 you pop on the, huh? that star was a little wet, so it's, there's a little, little blob of white in there. That's okay. Perfection is the enemy of art. I'm liking this painting just fine. I have a little, maybe that's the headlight of the car coming around. All right, I'm gonna keep going smaller and smaller because the farther down this road, the smaller those trees get. But they're still there, they're still there. I think I can squeeze one more in here. Those trees are really tiny down there. Now to get those tiniest ones, I'm just gonna take the tiniest little pop of the end of my brush and just get those tiniest ones, just like that. All right. I'm thinking my painting's done. What do you think? What do you think? Well, I'm thinking it's done. Yeah. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed painting with me today. I had a good time. I hope you learned something about how to paint pine trees and how to paint an aurora borealis sky. There's, again, there's lots of different ways to paint an aurora borealis sky. I showed you one way. You could paint it all black and then come in on top of the black with white, with pastel colors. That's one way. Some people might say it's easier. Another way is to come in with the colors and then put the black on 
with a sponge or with a um, piece of paper wadded up or aluminum foil or wax paper and then dab on some spots and then brush them out real quick. That's what we did. Either way works just fine, okay? Um, and yeah, so I think we're done. I might take my small brush, any areas that still look very blue in here. Let's see which one's mine. Uh, any areas that still look very blue in here. On the camera, it doesn't really appear that way, but I can just take my baby brush in the black and I can just kind of fill in some more areas if it's too blue. But, you know, I, it's not bothering me. It looks fine. So I'm not gonna obsess about anything. The whole reason I'm painting is so that I can not obsess about life, not obsess about my job or my business or my family relationships. I can just paint and relax. Oh goodness, that's what we need in this crazy world. We just need to relax. And so I can cover up this black, cover it up, the blue rather, underneath. If you use blue for your background, you can just kind of scribble it in to make it a little less obvious, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm, I'm happy with my painting. And when you're 80% happy, that's the time to stop. Because if you're going for 100, you'll probably mess it up. So when you're 80% happy, give it a rest, call it done. All right, now I, I like to sign my name in the lower right-hand corner. You can use a paint marker if you have those, one of those, or they're expensive and you get them at art stores. I don't bother. So my artists here really like those. I don't bother. I just chisel my baby brush back and forth, back and forth in the red paint. And I actually put a drop of white in it, mixed it in just so that it's going to show up. And I'm going to just put my two initials right down here and see. That's all it is. Boop! And I'm done. Thank you for painting with me today at Sitting and Painting Hamden. I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something. And uh, I learn from all of you. So please like and subscribe to my channel right down there. Hit like, hit subscribe, and stay tuned for more art classes from Sipping and Painting Hamden. Some will be from me, some will be from my staff, but um, Whoever it is, I'm sure you'll have a good time. Thanks so much for joining me. And where's my water? It's daytime, so cheers to you. Thanks again.